Mr. Guest, we're live. We sure are. And excited to be live because we've got some great stuff that we're going to be sharing today. It's been a we've... while, isn't it, since, until we, since we've done one of these, you and I? I know, I know. It's exciting though, isn't it? It's good to be back. And it's good to be back talking about boot camp and 22nd, 23rd of November and everything else that goes with it. And most importantly, back adding shed loads of value in helping people build better businesses, serve their clients better than ever before. Particularly now, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a interesting time, challenging, I think for many reasons, but exciting for many more reasons as well. Quickly fill everyone in while they're coming in, the viewers are creeping up and to say good afternoon to everyone. This kind of impromptu, it was what, I was in Jersey last week with you working on Power Bespoke, but more importantly, the epic content for Built to Grow in November, the boot camp. And I was like, let's just do a live because we've got to share some of this stuff. So here we are, and we're talking about how to differentiate in a crowded, low volume market. Um, so kick us off, G. The key word in there is differentiation, isn't it? I think every morning as business owners, when we wake up, we should be thinking about where is our edge? It is a crowded marketplace. Where's our differentiation? How do we add value? Um, and there's a couple of ideas that hopefully will um, plant some seeds earlier on. You know, you know, I talk a lot, Perry, about businesses don't grow on their own, leaders grow businesses. And if you're wearing your leadership hat, there's a really interesting concept that I'm talking about with a lot of businesses about at the moment, which goes beyond just a state agency. It's whatever business that you're in. But most business owners think about their business as a business that they need to manage as opposed to an asset that they need to develop. And I actually think that one of our roles as leaders is actually about being asset managers. And you might go, well, Royce, what does that really mean? How does that change how you think about your business? And for me, if you thought about your business as a series of mini assets, so one of the most important assets that you can have is when you've got an outstanding net promoter score. When you've got an NPS score that absolutely allows you to stand out and differentiate yourself from the competition that is validated with all the feedback from clients and it's got, you know, a significant number of um, NPS scores that you've had, then that is an asset of your business. When you've got the right people in the right seats doing the right things, that's an asset within your business. When you've got a funnel that you know is working, then that's an asset within your business. When you've got the sales that you've delivered and achieved all year, that's an asset within your business. So thinking about your business and actually, for me, changes your mindset, your psyche, and moves you from being just thinking about the mundane, tactical things that you do every day in your business when you start to think about yourself walking every single day and going how well am I managing all the mini assets and roll all those assets up together and you end up with a really high powerful asset you've got one behind you Perry in terms of power bespoke that's on the wall your brand equity both individual personal brand but also the the business brand carries a lot of asset value in the marketplace today so that's my first idea asset management and I think that's like I didn't really realize that this was one of them, but we've got our post-sale agreed checklist, right? And that, I think, is a mini asset to Power Bus Both because no one will have exactly the same post-sale agreed checklist. And it's this series of events that we do and who we contact to tell them about the sale we just agreed. And that's interesting because to me, that's a mini asset because no one else has got the exactly the same one. And on the Net Promoter Score, what was... I'm, I've always been quite fascinated by net promoter score, but I look at all the, some of these businesses that that are like referral programs and referral program, but they're they're offering a referral program on a service that is subpar. A lot of them yeah. was it, yeah. if they fix their NPS, they wouldn't need necessarily a referral program because most of their most of their customers and clients will be promoters anyway by default. They'd be a nine or a ten. That's a promoter, and you layer on a, a referral program on top of that to just maximize maybe the six, sevens or eights that probably would recommend you but aren't bothered to because they're not that type of profile of person. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm a geek when it comes to Net Promoter Score. Well, I think about your Net Promoter Score, and I'm going to blow um, smoke up you here in terms of um, <laughs> Apple, Net Promoter Score, 76%. Metro Bank, you know, revered as being one of the best banks that deliver a service experience. All banks are closing branches at the moment. Metro Bank are opening branches. Net Promoter score 82%. Power Bespoke, 
net promoter score 86 percent now when you're sat in the living room and you are doing what i call setting the buying criteria with clients it's great to say if you're seeing other estate agents if you get other people in the living room ask them what their year-to-date net promoter score is because that is your differentiator it's a differentiating factor you know, if it's not 86%, then you know who you need to go with. It's us, not anybody else in the marketplace. So all the time in a crowded marketplace, we've got to be looking for where's our edge? Where's our differentiation? And you know my passion, and I know you're going to talk more about this later, but measures that matter, numbers get cut through, numbers create clarity. And when you can talk with confidence about what your net promoter score is, that is a differentiating edge that you've got over anybody else. And I think, oh, from day one of Power Bespoke, now my challenge is going to become maintaining that 86 MPS score as we scale a lot bigger, if that's what we plan on doing. But um, we never cheat with that either. So every buyer, every seller, I think sometimes you can send them the net promoter score link to the people that you know were really happy and skip the ones that you know weren't happy. But ours goes out automated at the same time, at the same place, every single time. Like... You can't cheat it. Um, and there'll be some people that don't complete it. Those by default are intermediates. So they're kind of a nothing. If someone's really unhappy, they're going to take action on it. If they're really happy, they're going to take action on it. So really interesting. And the great um, thing is, Perry, undoubtedly, I'm sure that if a customer said to an estate agent in the living room, what's your differentiating factor We're going to talk about service experience and my answer will be prove it now you say you deliver a great service experience how do i know you're going to walk the talk because every other tom dick and harry who comes in the living room is going to say the same thing and if you can respond with actually the reason i know is because my net promoter score is 86 percent, so we walk the talk and when you've got we that carry a screen we we carry a screen grab of that in our advice meeting presentation on our ipads you can flick to to be like this is our net promoter score yeah and let me kind of give you another gold nugget for differentiated service experience. And I know we're going to talk, talk about this a lot at boot camp. And it's a conversation that you and I have developed in terms of when you talk about differentiation. And it's particularly relevant for the marketplace that we're in now, which is a you know low volume marketplace where you've really got to capture and work on every single opportunity you've got. And I call it the TVP. What's your total value proposition? And this goes back to two things, Perry. It goes back to all the work. And, you know, what I'm so passionate about is be really clear about what your purpose is. So in our case at Power Bespoke, opening the door to the next chapter of your life. We don't help people sell houses. We help them open the door to the next chapter of their life. And also, which I know you're passionate about, is every single one of your team are property negotiators. They're mm. world-class property negotiators, qualified property negotiators. Now, with those two things in play, then you elevate your thinking and you start to think about what's our total value proposition. And the total value proposition is understanding that, you know, it's not just about selling the house. For how many of your customers this year for where you've sold their house are moving on to do an onward negotiation or they're moving to buy a new property? And your role as a world-class property negotiator, your role in terms of opening the door to the next chapter of their life it's not just about helping them sell their house, which is only 50% of the deal. It's about helping them to negotiate the onward purchase and get the best possible price. And when you talk about the total value proposition, it doesn't matter in the marketplace whether houses are um, declining in terms of their value. Because when you're looking at the total value proposition, you might sell it for 5% less. But guess what? You're going to be better at negotiating and you're going to negotiate hard on your next onward purchase. So when you look at the total value proposition and you're having that conversation, then it completely differentiates you in the marketplace. Literally had one of those this week. So um, I sold a house off market for two and a half million. The mum and the daughter live there. The daughter was then, when the mum sold the big farm, the daughter was going to buy a house. Anyway, she had agreed a price on this house um, four months ago. Um, didn't. I offered my help. She was like, no, it's fine. You know, it's fine. So th done it herself. Um, then literally yesterday she rung me and said, I've really overpaid for that house and I don't know what to do about it. Like the selling agent made the mistake, a quick background story. The selling agent made the mistake of when there were some delays on the sale that I was handling, the agent and the seller threw their dummies out of their pram and ended up putting the house back on the market. So 
three, two months, three months later, the house is still for sale for the same price that she had agreed to pay for it. So she was like, I'm clearly paying too much. What do I do? And I was like, well, you renegotiate. She was like, I can't do that. I feel really nervous doing that. I was like, well, I'll do it for you then. And I rung the agent up and, and I renegotiated a saving a 30 odd grand for her. She was going to probably pay. She would, she felt like she'll be getting a good deal if she got it for 450. I got it for her for 430 down from 460. So great example. And she's over the moon. She even said to me, because the next day I was out of the office back to back most of the day. And I said, look, this is what they're going to do. They're going to call you tomorrow. This is what they're going to do. You're going to do this and all will be good. And she was like, oh, oh no, I'd really rather you'd done it and saw this through because I'm just so nervous. So it's um, that is a huge benefit to them and a huge income generator for you as an agent in a low volume market. It's massive because actually think about that for a moment. When you're working with your total value proposition, it's not about having to go out there and get more sales, more listings. No. It's about optimizing the average deal size. And you're working smart. So you're capitalizing on the investment that you've already made in acquiring the, the, the lead, the business, the opportunity. You're maximizing. And it's so key in a low, low volume market because, what you know, it's a no brainer. And you made an interesting point there. She was nervous. The challenge is most people are poor negotiators. Hmm. And the second thing is never negotiate on something where you've got emotional skin in the game because you will not negotiate well, which is why you can take the pain away as a world-class property negotiator and you can focus on the on the TVP, total value proposition. So if you are not working your TVP, your total value proposition, then that is absolutely your golden nugget from today. Um, and we're going to go into that in a lot more detail on bootcamp. And I really think if your strategy for the next 12, 24 months is to just try and get more listings to survive, you're going to fail. I really believe that. Because my next point is like, this is the perfect time. If ever you've been nervous or hesitant or wanting to increase your fees, now is the perfect time to do it. And that, as in like, draw a line in the sand from this point forward. So I don't sell anything for under £20,000 minimum fee is my personal minimum fee. Our company-wide average fee is 15 grand. That's up from nine grand last year. And that's extremely important because if you've got lower in volume, we're still going to do a similar amount of revenue potentially from less number of houses. And there's so many ways to do that, which I'll cover more over the two days. But a really important one is the switcher strategy, which kind of for two years wasn't possible. You just take the words out of my mouth because that's exactly where I was going to spin off the back. The switcher strategy yeah. is the golden nugget because yeah. when a house has been on the market, it's not sold. It almost becomes a distressed sale for the for the for the owners who are trying to sell it. And when you go in as the shining knight on your shining horse, talking about what you can do, and I don't know what the stat is today, Perry. How many how many houses don't sell with the first? What's the UK industry average in terms of second selling with a second agent? There was a lot of data flicking around a few years back that uh, around half of properties sell with a second agent. I reckon that's more like 60%. I, I, I saw somewhere the other day, 67% of houses don't sell with a first estate agent. Now, therein lies your opportunity. One, if you have not got a proactive, systemized switch of strategy in terms of how you are looking at, at the marketplace around you, again, stock that is sticking, um, then absolutely that needs to be your golden nugget in terms of structuring it. But back to your point about increasing your fees, you will get a higher fee when you are going in and in off the back of a switch of strategy because they're frustrated, they're anxious, they haven't, it's not sold with a first estate agent. So you have got the prime opportunity. So even if at the moment, if you are losing some properties first time round because somebody is overvaluing it, they're over promising then you know what? Be comfortable with that because 67% are going to come back on, onto the market and you just need to be ready to capitalize on that. It's really interesting. So agents that come into Power Bespoke, one in particular that's with us now from a corporate background, when I said to her, it's okay to walk away and lose listings, she was like, what do you mean? Like that was so foreign to her. And I was like, it's totally okay. But what's not okay is you're not having a structured approach to getting it back in three or four months time. Spot on. If you're going to walk away from it and be like, oh, you know, no, I'm not dropping my fee. Like every week for 16 weeks, you need to be in touch with that person. 
and we get so much secondhand business at the minute now. And, and Perry, we need to walk through on boot camp exactly what you do. For the moment, you don't get that property. What are what are the things you do every single week as part of your nurturing strategy for sixteen weeks until the point where you absolutely go and win that business back uh, at a higher fee than you would have done first time round? We had one recently, and um, we'll touch on it more because you're a walking example of that. Because right, you obviously went with a local agent because I, at the time of your property, I suggested that you should actually because we were very far away. They that was the worst bit of advice you gave me, by the way, Power. <laughs> yeah. It was a terrible bit of advice. That was all part of the strategy were, to get it. I swear on it, they were shit. I didn't like, want it really first hand. Shit. That was all part of the strategy to get it second hand. <laughs> <laughs> More distressed. <laughs> yeah, but you did charge me a bit larger fee as well. <laughs> we got the job done. Got the it job worked. Done. Good old Georgie. But one happened the other day. It was really interesting in, in that um, the person wanted to buy through us. But they're like, oh, no, no, thanks. We will serve our local agent. Okay, just make sure you do this and that, blah, blah. blah. Anyway, it all went wrong. They come back to us because they still wanted to buy the property through us. And we switched them. Here's the real crucial bit right now is we're switching most of our switcher strategies into committed transaction. And we'll go into that massively deeper in boot camp because it is so complicated because you've got to be able to take a 1% deposit off the buyer and blah, blah, blah. And people love it because... You're saying some, look, do you want that to happen again, that fall through? No, I don't. Okay, cool. This is how we have to do it then. That's the only way I can protect you from it not falling through. But what's coming out, Perry, even from the first 17 minutes that we're doing on this live is there is a absolute conscious, deliberate success formula to operate and be successful in a low volume, crowded market. If you want to create differentiation, there are absolutely golden nugget strategies that you need to be deploying in your business. And there's no golden bullet with this. It is no. multiple strategies that you are implementing where you do marginal gains in all of those. And when you absolutely get these right and implemented in your business, then you will end 2023 with a strong pipeline that will set you up for success. And you will be differentiated. And everybody in your local market will be looking at you and going, how are they doing that? How are they getting the edge? Um, because they'll be looking at you for best practice. Well, check this out. Literally this week, we had an email into the office inbox on our online chat, 24-7 manned live chat, uh, 8 o'clock at night, it literally said, because we can see on our on our online chat logs what page they were on when they instigated the chat, and it literally said, hi, I found a house to buy. Can you please negotiate it for me? I'm going to show <laughs> people at boot camp. I'm going to print this off and take you through the whole how I SEO'd the page i'm a bit of a geek so i do my own seo on the website and so how if someone searches for buying agent power bespoke comes up really high in organic um, search terms if they search for property purchase negotiator we are up there so they landed on the page online chat and now mel i've just seen has sent a proposal to charge them 30 percent of the saving off the asking price and they are wanting that service like and it's it's the most profitable part of your estate agency ever and we'll go back in, we'll go deeper in that during boot camp because it's a no cost other than time and skill and ability and expertise that everyone on this call has got. Because for the last however many years, all they've been doing a single day is negotiating property sales. Flip that onto purchases and you've got a really good way to increase your fee. And when it comes to fee, like I'm not saying you've all got to wake up tomorrow and start charging 2% if you're currently charging one, just edging the onward negotiation service, but charge for it. In edging or make sure everyone should be doing this pen and paper write this down everybody should be doing a performance fee right now um more so now because at the minute it's a what i call a fly or flop market every house to the market is going to fly and go really really well we had one last week 750 plus seven offers 765 it was agreed at we had a performance fee on that and he was happy um so those two ways are really important to make sure that you're that that's ways to increase your average fee really simply. And then back to your point in a low volume market, that is that is so important. Um I, I always go back to the point, Perry. I I absolutely believe that conversation where we came up with the whole total value proposition, onward negotiation proposition. You know, I, I still can't believe why more estate agencies are not really leveraging the power of that. And I, it's, I've wrapped my brains over the last 12 months because I've got other clients that, that I work with who are still, they get the concept, but 
they're not just not doing it. So what I've worked really hard on over the last six months is really understanding what are the kind of the mindset shifts or the or the cultural barriers to actually optimizing it and making sure that you're capitalizing on it. So I want to I want to talk about those on bootcamp because they're really important. Yeah, we'll touch on them more because it's about reframing yourself to you're not an estate agent. You're a I would reframe it to I'm a buying agent. That's pretty much uh, and I happen to sell houses as well. I think too many agents are are in um and it's muscle memory, isn't it? I guess it is that you're in that's what you've been doing for years, selling houses, selling property, but people want the service on the purchase side. And it, it's really interesting you say that because it is about you talk about this differentiation, which is a big part of our conversation today. So I've got a wealth business that I work with. They've got 14 wealth advisors, phenomenally successful business, you know, really at the top of their game. And we did the whole what business are you really in exercise. And now if they're at a networking event and somebody says to one of their wealth advisors, what you do, they say, I help you work out your number. And then they just pause. And they go, what do you mean you help me work out your number? I help people work out what the number is they need in order to retire at the age they want to retire at. Wow. That's really interesting. I don't know what my number is. Well, there's a challenge. So I don't come along, help you work out your number. And then I'll put in place a cash flow forecast and a plan in order to help you to make sure that when you do get to the point of retirement, you're going to hit your number. and You're going to be able to retire. Now, that's, that's about differentiation. You've got to figure out the way of positioning it. And that goes back to thinking about what business you're really in. And when you talk about being a, I'm a, a buying negotiator or I'm a property negotiator, or I'm in the business of opening the door to the next chapter of your life. When you truly get that, then you know the differentiation, you will create a blue ocean and differentiate yourself from a crowded red ocean competitive marketplace. Yeah. And I, I think there's two more big things that I wanted to touch on with. Um, and this is a tricky one. And again, like all the stuff that is interesting because we operate better and we're doing a lot better in a tougher market. Um, and all the things that I started to do with Power Bespoke kind of didn't really come in weren't really helping us during the crazy two, three year market, but they're really starting to come back now. For example, an incredible strategy, like we're all finding at the minute across every single estate agency that you convert that your advice meeting valuation, you know, I hate that word, but your advice meeting conversion rate is going to be lower as people are just this, having a feasibility assessment and then deciding actually I can't afford it or I am going to stay put. So the mentioning authority strategy is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Um, very low friction, progress the customer, don't harass the customer onto the market, blah, blah, blah. We've got all the templates, the downloads, the copy and paste contracts that we use at Bootcamp. So that's a really important one, mentioning authority. Second to that is it, there's never been a more important time to absolutely know your numbers. So when people are saying to me in a living room, oh yeah, you know, oh, that's a low valuation and that's a high fee and um, why would I sell with you? I'll be explaining that we will maximize the price of your property. And I know that because across our whole company this quarter, we've extracted an additional 4.9% on average from initial offer to sale agreed. 4.9%. Think, think about that as a, if house prices have dropped 5%, right? Have house prices dropped or are estate agents just shit? Because we're... <laughs> Because we're managing to negotiate from offer. Now, if we were crap negotiators and we we're rolling over, like some agents are in that mindset of, oh, you know, the market's going down, then they're going to be like, Mr. Smith, you've got an offer, bloody take it and run. Whereas rule number one at Power Bespoke, and it's and it's become the laughing stock in our team WhatsApp group, whenever someone gets an offer on something, drops it in the group, is that never accept the first offer. A bit like Chris Voss's never split the difference. We've got this culture of you just even if it was 20 grand over asking price you never accept it because it's the first offer and with that approach i can sit in someone's living room this is across the company this isn't just mine uh, probably mine's more like 3.5 percent but across the company 4.9 percent from initial offer to sale agreed that's the kind of numbers that you have to be sharing more so right now than oh, we achieve 100.1 percent of asking price on average like because everyone's sharing that stuff. So to be a real differentiator, you should be sharing this quarter, John. We've had 40 offers. We've agreed 30 of them. And in that 
time agreeing them, we've got them up 4.9% on average. Madness. Do you know what we're going to do at boot camp this year, Perry, which is going to be a really cool thing to do and completely different experience to what we've ever done before? We're going to take a whole wall in the room and we're going to call it our client journey map. Mm. I'm going to start at one end and we're going to go from inquiry that comes in right the way through to sale completed. And we're going to map every single stage of the customer journey through the business, you know, from listings, when you're in the living room, if they say this, what do you say? If the drop down is mentioned in authority, we're going to work through the whole two days and just do the whole journey and look at exactly what you do and conversations that you have, what you introduce at what time, what strategy you deploy at this point, what you've got in your toolkit, like your 11 step plan. That's where you talk about that. We're going to map and walk through the whole client journey, starting on day one, right the way through. So by the end of it, you've got a complete toolkit, mindset, skill set, tool set along the whole customer journey. Now, I think that's a really cool, that's, that'd be a really cool thing to do and make it really practical. Yeah, I think we done that, you and I, for Power Bespoke, very early on when you started coaching me. And that was really eye-opening for me, for sure. And that's where I learned where to wean in, because I had a net promoter squad as well. It's not just once at the end of the transaction. It's a week after going live with us. It's straight after an advice meeting. It's a week after being sale agreed, and it's with the solicitors. So we can eat, so we can always see over time where we're weakest. That's the important. Yeah, it's great. We've got an eight, but we definitely haven't got an 86 score at a certain stage of it. Come the end of it, we have. So that means that if someone's a bit underwhelmed, we're pulling it back, but we know where we need to improve. But I guarantee one thing, Perry, everybody will be, when we, by the time we finish that client journey map, because I think sometimes the challenge is you and I throw out so many great ideas and, and the way that you've taken all the concepts to build to grow and personalize it for a state agency is just, it's one of the best examples. It's really compliment to you. But here's the deal. I think sometimes it can be, oh my God, how does all this lot slot together? So if we've got a wall where we are building that client journey map, and literally, we are showing the jigsaws and marketing and going, right, this is what you do here. And if they say this, this is what you do. And this is what you introduce. If by the end of two days, we've got that, then people can just take photos of that. They've got the whole thing on there. It will give you the whole map with how every single piece of the jigsaw slots together. And I think that'll be just so value adding for, for, for the teams that are people that are there. Yeah, that'd be much. So like, as we go through the through days, almost, you're saying like it, we're going to build it as we go through. 100%. Yeah, that'd be awesome, yeah. And make it really um, practical and absolutely, you know, and at this point they say this, you do this and just just walk through the whole thing. No, this is when you do your, when do you ask about your net promote score? Because, you know, you just don't end up with an 86% net promote score. It's about at what points along the customer journey do you do your net promote score? Because what it allows you to do is do your thermometer checks along the way. It's not just about doing it at the end. So we'll track all that, show exactly where you introduce all those things. And it'd be great, Penny, because we did do it early when I first started working with you. So it'd be great to go back and pull that out, that mm, map, yeah, still got it and all. then look yeah. at now, so many years later, about how it's matured. And you know, for me, it's about making sure that it's relevant to the marketplace. And I just yeah. want people, estate agents, to be so conscious and deliberate in thinking about how do I need to be set up for success in this current climate marketplace? How do I optimize? How do I really leverage, differentiate, optimize our position in, in the marketplace that we're in. So, you know, we've got to really raise our game and think differently. And particularly for, we get a lot of people who come back to boot camp, which is a compliment, but that raises yeah. the bar for us, Perry, because what you've got to constantly be doing is adding value, taking it to the next level and differentiating. Yeah. Making sure they get new stuff. every, And it is because we're, we're very frontline, both of us, particularly at Power Bespoke. And I'm obviously sharing exactly what we're doing right now. Because it's um, one thing actually that I wanted to leave everyone on. We're nearly at half an hour, so it's a good it's a good length. Because I, I had a lot of message people saying they couldn't make the live at four, but they're gonna watch it back tonight. But um, I had a I had a message come into me yesterday from from someone that's on the market, another estate agent, and he screen grabbed the message that the agent had sent to him. And no joke, of, no joke of a lie, right? This is I find it hard to comprehend because I just don't understand how that can be that crappy estate agents out there but it literally said hi carl there's been no interest in your property for the last three weeks what would you like us to do 
right? Oh my god! No, honestly, <laughs> and this and this leads in nicely to something that I want to share with everyone that we do with Power Bespoke. And he messaged me saying, "How the fuck am I supposed to know? I'm not the estate agent." And it ties in really well with with the only conversations you should be having right now with people who are struggling to sell is the options conversation, right? And there's only three options. Come off market, rent it out, reduce the price. The caveat to that, so that makes really good conversations. You know, hey, Royston, you know, as as per last week, no viewings this week. I'm really sorry. I've been refreshing all the marketing and this one's sold next door to you. This one's gone on the market recently cheaper than you. What should we do next? Do you want to reduce it? Take it off the market or rent it out? So let, let them lead the the options. Those those options conversations are really quite important. Please don't be the one that says, ask the client, what shall I do? <laughs> Mad. You are the expert. Uh, and that leaves me on a point, which will be my final point. I think you have got to be a better value creator than anybody else in your marketplace. If you add more value and... One of my favorite quotes is when you talk about, I always talk about the boomerang and you've heard me talk about this a lot, Perry. You can get whatever you want in life if you help enough people get what they want. And I think the estate agents that will really differentiate themselves are the ones who wake up every single day focused on how do I add more value than other people are expecting? How can I up the game in my service experience? How can I add more value by focusing on the total value proposition the tvp as opposed to just only doing 50 percent of the the proposition and when you are really focused on being the best value creator that you know then and getting all your team to be the best value creators then do you know what the business will come you will absolutely differentiate yourself so that's my that's my final point in terms of be the best value creator that you know and on that point you might even see a boomerang there we go the boomerang stuck to the wall the one you gave me how many years ago was that madness um, wow. But aside from that, still to this day, I've done it for the last 10 years. I will send my potential sellers other agents' listings to say, look, check this place. I just come on the market with Hamptons, right? Because they like it. They buy it. I negotiate the purchase for it. And then I get their house on for sale off the back of it. I've done all that. Even before Hamptons are bothered ringing them up about the house that they've been asked to sell. So anyway. We waffle on, but really look forward to boot camp. Regardless, hope this is this has been really helpful. We're at about fifty five percent places gone for boot camp now. I think well, it's, it's, the, it's the sold out the fastest we've ever done for a boot camp. Bear in Most, mind that we're only still in September and it's November, and it's so, a nice yeah, no, we're, of, we're flying. Of, of newbies and the people in the room that make it extremely funny because we can rip the shit out of them. People we tend not to do that to the newbies, um, so it's going to be. An amazing two days. But it is 55%. So, and when it's full, it's full. We don't kind of, we're not the kind of guys that will, oh, we'll just open the door and put more numbers in because boot camp is an intimate experience. So when it's sold out, it is sold out. And then we'll just create a waiting list. And I can't stress um, that enough that I love the, uh, we've done so well with boot camp because it is a real hands on workshoppy style, not a conference. Massive difference. It's not a we're going to be standing there preaching what we do. It's, Here's the templates. Here's the copy and paste. And then we spend loads of time. Royce in particular spends loads of time on your exact business. We we chew the fat on challenges as a room. And I find that so powerful. And I think if we do this whole client journey mapping, Perry, and have, that, have a wall there that we do this on and we absolutely go through it step by step walking through and everybody can go, okay, great, get that bit. But what do you do at that point there? And what's the options? And this is what you say and this is what you do or this is how you position it or this is what you move on to, or that's the point at which you do you mention in authority. I just think that's going to be absolutely epic. Yeah. It's like, and I'll give you just everyone a little sneak peek here is when your second business, second hand business, I don't offer an option of private treaty sales. The only, when they're calling me back or they're saying, great Perry, can you take over? I'm saying, great. Yeah, I certainly can on our committed transaction sale method. And I'm not like, which option do you want, private treaty or committed transaction? There's only one option if I'm going to help and take over. I need to just quickly answer P.O.'s question. I think if I, I pronounce that right, I'm really sorry. She said, Perry, what do you, or he said, Perry, what do you mean by rinse it out? Now, what I actually meant was rent it out, but I talk so fast and I'm from <laughs> South London Council Estate that people don't always understand. So it was the three options, rent it out, 
reduce the price or take it off the market. Those are pretty much the only three outcomes because sitting there for another six weeks ain't an option, Mr. Smith, because I'm not here to market houses. I'm here to sell them, move you on to your next chapter, not look good with 100 properties on the books, not selling. Right. Amazing. Perry, right. final question. If there's one thing you're going to leave people with from today, your one final message, what would it be? And we haven't planned that, so I've just put you right on the spot there. Have to increase your fees right now. You have to, because the volume is just going to get less and less, I think, in the next 12 months. If you're struggling now for new instructions, next year you're going to be crucified. Now, I don't mean, it's like I said, there's probably um, <clears throat> six, seven ways you could increase your average fee per client. It's not all of a sudden going, doing an Ian story, going from 999 to 2% overnight after boot camp. It is literally marginal gains over the next 12 months will make a massive difference. Premium promotion options, you know, stop paying for the 700 pound videos and have clients pay a thousand pound for those if they want them. Um, loads of things. And we'll go deep on boot camp. We'll do a whole, I reckon that's a good take up, a good four, five hours of a day. Well, total value proposition is part of increasing your fees. Yeah. No, there's, there's multiple strategies. By the end of boot camp, I reckon people will have at least a dozen or a dozen and a half, two dozen ways of increasing fees. When most people think about increasing fees, they just think about, you know, whatever it is, 1.5, 1.75%. No, 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 no. There's multiple strategies that you need to deploy. And, you need to and I really strongly really believe this, and I, I might ruffle a few feathers, but if you're losing them all because you keep increasing your fees, you need to get better. You need to improve yourself. I've seen so many agents try and dip their toe in higher fees, it not work out, and they retreat back to a position of safety because they're winning the client, rather than saying, oh, shit, I need to work on myself. Dropping my fees ain't an option. The only option in that case is getting better at getting them. Um, and one huge strategy, for, if you are going to just double your fees, just focus on secondhand stock, because they will pay it. Spot on. That was going to be my message. Switch your strategy is more important than ever, but you've got to have a systemized, structured, systematic way in which you in which you do it. Yeah, and we've got a complete mapped out. Week one is this, week two is that, week three is that, week four is that. I mean, week two is is giving them advice on how their estate agent could improve their properties, marketing and advertising. And it ends up becoming, can you just do it for me like that, please? Because my agent says yeah. that's not how they do it. Okay, I'll be around next Tuesday. But like, it's so... It, it, I said to someone the other day, it's so easy, but it really, I get it really isn't easy, but it is very simple. State agency, I think that's why maybe I'm good at it. It's just such a simple thing, but it is pretty, all that stuff around it is hard and complicated. Simplicity is genius, Mr. Power. Are we going to put the link in below for uh, where people can sign up to boot camp? We're going to put that in the link. Yes. And bear in mind, September, it's if we find returners say a lot of the time that it's so much better when they bring two or three members of their team because they get two yeah. or three times the amount of stuff absorbed rather than one brain in the room so yeah. what we've done this year is uh, for september only when you book three spaces you only pay for two so you can free of your team members gives you three times x output when you get back to the office and energy and strategies and excitement but from the first of october that is definitely gone because we are booking up pretty quick yeah book two places get one place free can't say better than that can you it's a bargain Love it. Mr. Guest, have a great evening. This has been good. Um, and you, and I, hope every, now. Got, I hope everyone got real value from that. Even uh, you've taken away a couple of golden gems from today. So if you get a couple of golden gems from 39 minutes and 26 seconds. Just imagine what you'll get from two days with the power and guest in the room. Love it. Ant and Deck. Was it Ant and Mike? <laughs> yeah, Ant and Deck. Or Dumb and Dumber. Can't remember which one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Love it. All right. Have a good Thanks, evening. Thank you. See you. See you later. Bye.